I think we are live. Go live. Here we go. All right, everybody. Give me just a moment while we let everybody settle in. Come on in. Come on in. Settle in. Looking forward to sharing this chat with you. And let me just open up the chat over here. Go live. Here we go. Whoa. All right, everybody. Volume. Welcome in, everybody. Just give us a quick moment while people trickle in and we'll uh, get started in just a second. I'm going to bring up the chat here too, just to see what you have to share. And if anybody's got questions throughout, please put it in the question box and I will check that. All right. Uh, let me just get this going. Question box. There it is. Good, good morning, everyone, or afternoon or evening, wherever you are. Let's just wait another moment. We'll let everybody trickle in. In the meantime, throw up where you are from. Um, and we'd love to just kind of anything that you're interested in learning today, throw it in the, the chat below and I'll be monitoring it here. Um, I've got a second phone so that I don't have to go back and forth over there. Um, so real quick, if you don't know me already, my name is Matt and we're gonna get started in just a minute. We're gonna let everybody kind of trickle in here and we're gonna have a discussion today on the six layered self and how to practice appropriately for the different layers. Um, so let's just make sure everything's cool. We're over on Facebook. All right. All right, we're live on Facebook. We're live on, on YouTube. All right, and we're gonna get started. I'll keep this up. If you have questions for me, make sure that you uh, put it in the Q&A because that's gonna pop up over here for me so that I can see. And um, let's get rolling. Thank you everybody for being here. Thanks for tuning in. I'm looking forward to sharing this with you. Today's topic is the sixth layered self according to the tantric model. So if you're not familiar with Tantra, Tantra is a lineage of yoga, uh, just like any other lineage of yoga. However, there seems to be a misconception around Tantra. Tantra seems to be like in the US in particular related to like sex cult, but that's not what Tantra is. Tantra, just like Vedanta, is just another lineage of yoga and the practice of self-awareness or becoming self-aware is the goal of Tantra. Okay, so we have these six layers to our being and this is really important because many of us are focused on one or another and we miss the others and they all affect each other. And so our overall health and well-being and joy and lightness and freedom depends upon the health of each of these layers. So if you're only practicing, let's say, the physical layer, uh, going to do yoga, doing asana, going to the gym, whatever it is to get uh, aware of your physical body, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to find mental well-being. It doesn't mean that you won't, that, but it, there are these differentiations between the layers of our being that the previous yogis have laid out for us so that we can understand that there are different practices for the layers. Okay, so you may be familiar with the koshas. Some of you that are, have studied a bit of yoga philosophy, you'll know the koshas. Those are the five layers of our being. This is a little different. This is the tantric model. It's slightly, uh, there are some shifts and I can point them out to you for those of you that are already familiar with the koshas, but I'm not gonna go deep into the koshas today. That's something that I have gone over and I will go over again. It's a different mod module and, sorry, module, different model. And um, it is a different mindset and we'll have to kind of like flip into those mindsets when you take on different philosophies. Nothing wrong with um, studying multiple philosophies in my personal opinion. They can only strengthen your own self inquiry. And self-inquiry, by the way, is asking yourself questions to reflect upon your experience of life, okay? So we have the tantric model of the sixth layered self. And at the core of our being is the, the deepest, most, the innermost part of us. We'll start right there, right at the, the depth of who we are is awareness, okay? That word right there, if it's too small on your screen, is aware, awareness. In yoga, that uh, in Sanskrit terms, this deepest layer is called chit, C-I-T, pronounced with like a C-H-I-T. So chit is the deepest layer of our being. It's the core of our being. Now what that means is the deepest layers, think of this like an onion. Think of ourself as a human being as, as like an onion. You keep peeling back layers, you know, you eventually get to that little core. And that core 
um, the energy of it, according to the sixth layer itself, permeates all other layers. So awareness is not just at the core and you gotta dig to it. Awareness permeates, meaning it's within all the other layers of our being. So within our physical body, awareness exists. That's why you know you can be um, you can be unaware of certain muscles and how to use them, and then through the practice of yoga asana or anything else for that matter, you might start to become aware of that muscle and gain greater use and access to it. So then yoga postures are more accessible, okay? So you can become aware of, and you can also fall asleep to, you can forget the muscles um, of your body, and then we probably have some problems. So the yoga practice, um, that we know today is predominantly something called asana, meaning physical practice. Asana translates directly to the word seat. Um, it's working on your posture, more or less, right? So the way that we would say in, in like the tantric lineage is it's awareness of the physical body, the outermost layer. So let's jump to the outside for a second. The outermost layer of our being is the physical body. Okay, it's the most tangible, it's the most manifested form. It's the, uh, the grossest, meaning not like uh, ew gross, but grossest, like the most um, uh, touchable, the most outermost layer. Excuse me, I got an eyelash in my eye. And because it is the, most, the outermost layer, it is typically the easy, easiest layer for all of us to, um, to be familiar with. Doesn't mean that everyone is, okay? So, we all have tendencies and patterns. Some of us really exist deeply in the mind. Some of us exist in the physical body. And we have um, life experiences that have shaped the way that we experience this world, okay? Our perception. And some of us are perhaps avoidant of the physical body while others are uh, love the physical body. So you can tell the difference, right? Somebody who's like really, um, uh, let's say ego identified with the physical body is gonna sculpt their body constantly to try to attain a certain, what they believe is the perfect physical form. And it's usually from an aesthetic standpoint. And I'm saying, not saying that like lifting or sculpting or anything like this or is bad. It's the pursuit for which the intention behind which that could get really egoic and unfortunately very challenging um, emotionally and mentally for those that are in that pursuit. We all have this thing called the ego that exists within the layer of the heart mind. So the next layer deep, the physical body, the next layer deep according to the tantric model, and this is where it differs from um, the, the um, what's the word I'm looking for? The other model, which is, um, I'm blanking out. So anyway, I'm gonna come back to that for a second. But anyway, the body, the mind, or the heart mind as said in the tantric model, is the layer of our being for which we perceive and experience. We receive this experience of human life. So we have like these senses. We have the eyes, the ears that we can taste, we can feel, right? So we have all these different um, uh, capacities, what we call the senses, to take in the outside world. Now how we process the outside world is what the yogis would call heart mind. It's consistent of our emotions and our thoughts, okay? So thoughts and emotions are in the heart-mind um, place. Now, sensation, by the way, we wouldn't necessarily put into heart-mind. So you, if you're familiar with neuroscience, they would put uh, emotions in there. They would say like tired is an emotion. This is not an emotion according to the yogic tradition. That like feeling of energy is what the yogis call prana. They actually separate the difference between our energy and our emotions. Our emotions and thoughts are on one layer according to all different um, yogic lineages, not just the tantric lineage. So when we talk about the mind in yoga, it's always thoughts and emotions. It's our perception of the outside world. It's how we process. It's our experience, okay? So the heart mind is deeper than the physical body. And in the mind, we have something called the ego. Many of you are familiar with this. It's the part of us that identifies, that takes on identities and um, develops a 
possessiveness over those identities, an inflexibility about who I am. It's the I am statement or the I maker. So the name for the ego in Sanskrit is the ahankara. It can be spelled with an M or an N, ahankara or hamkara. Okay, so the ahankara is that I maker. It's the part of our mind that is constantly looking to identify with things or uh, roles that we play, um, positions in society. So we might identify with the amount of money we have. I am poor. I am rich. We might identify with uh, being a family member. I am a child. I am a mom. I am a dad. There is all, or you might identify with the role you play in society. I am a yoga teacher, my job, right? Or I am um, popular or I am, not. there's so many I am statements within the mind layer. And part of what yoga teaches us is to become flexible with those I am statements. Um, some yogic lineages, and this is where Tantra differs, but some yogic lineages would say we want to abolish the ego and um, become one with the universe. So there is no identity. And that would be the a definition of enlightenment in certain lineages. In this lineage, there's the recognition that the ego is part of the mind and we wouldn't actually want to abolish the mind by any means. We want to develop health of the mind. So we want to cleanse what is not serving us and serving the world. And um, that means the ego, our identity, can actually expand to something much bigger. So we can identify with all there is. So I am simultaneously a yoga teacher and I'm also a human being, and I'm also uh, this uh, an expression of the magnificent energy that is consciousness pulsing through all things. So we can have multiple identities that, so this is more like making the ego flexible, more open to play a role. So I can step into the role of, um, you know, for, I'm not a parent, but if I was, I can step into the role of father, and then I could also step into the role of son without being trying to parent my father, right? Or I can step into the role of yoga teacher, and then simultaneously, I can step into a room and be yoga student and not have to be like, oh, I know best, right? So identity in the tantric lineage, in the heart-mind area, is to be cleansed, is to be, uh, we try to become more free within it. We try to allow it to be more expanded, okay? So I'm just gonna take a quick moment. Thank you everybody for tuning in here. I see all your comments coming through. I appreciate that. Um, this is not the eightfold path as someone mentioned. This is the sixth layered self, um, which is different from the eightfold path. It's actually uh, not really at all the same subject. So I will get to your questions. If you have questions, please put them in the, um, the Q and A box at the bottom. That way I can answer them. If you're on Instagram, if you're on Facebook, I'll click back. You can put them in the comments. I see some of you over here. Um, thank you for, uh, following and I appreciate Yeah. Cool. Mind, thoughts, emotions, all, all of our being, all of us are in the mind. Cool. Thank you. Um, those of you that are tuned in on, on Facebook, th thank you those that are tuned in on Instagram and YouTube. Um, happy to have you all here. So let's continue and then I'll take more uh, questions in a moment. And please um, feel free to use that Q&A box because if you have a question that comes up now, you can put it in the Q&A box and I will actually see it later. It'll stay there, whereas the comments will just kind of flip up and down, okay? Co use the comments for, for chatter and um, for thumbs up and hearts and everything. Okay, so. We've predominantly gone over the physical body and a little bit about this heart mind. The heart mind is uh, deep, right? So one aspect of the heart mind is the ego, our identity. Another aspect of our heart mind is called the buddhi, which is the intellect. It's the part of us that can discern or decipher and judge the differences between things. And also it's the magnificent part of our mind that we can train to turn inward instead of for most of us the intellect is trained throughout school as we grow up as a child to be about the outer world nothing wrong with that that's part of learning to be a human is to understand the differentiation between our senses and what's happening in our life but we're usually not and i'm not speaking for everybody but most of us are not trained to use the buddhi the intellect to um reflect inward. 
And so a large part of the yogic practices are about learning to train our intellect to look inside of ourselves rather than outside of ourselves. And so what that means is we need yogic practices for each layer. For example, the physical body layer to develop more, again, the, the core of our being and the goal essentially of um, Tantra as a yogic lineage is to tap into the essence of who we are, the deepest core of ourselves, and experience it on all other layers. That means to tap into the fact that we are conscious beings that are blissfully aware. That is it. There's nothing more than that. There's no good or bad, just that we are conscious beings that are blissfully aware, floating in this experience of time and space. And if we are uh, diligent enough, we can actually experience that deep sense of our being, chit awareness. Uh, and in this tantric model, by the way, the core of our being is both awareness and bliss. And there's this uh, not ordinary happiness, by the way, that's not, that's not the same. Bliss is the con completeness, the contentment of all there is, and simultaneously content with the nothingness of all there is. This is a very confusing and very challenging subject to talk about within a bigger frame. So I don't wanna get too deep into this of what it is, but at the core of our being is just this consciousness that is pulsing through all things, okay? It is the awareness. Consciousness and awareness are interchangeable in this conversation okay so consciousness is a pulse of energy right it is awake and it's because we at the core of our being that we are awake beings that we can even have this conversation on the level of our heart mind and we can even experience the physical body okay so the physical body we can develop physical awareness of our physical form this is one thing that I've been talking about for many many years in my teaching Development of strength and flexibility are important, but the most important aspect is that you are developing awareness of your physical body. You can be uh, on the outside, look like you're not strong, but if you have access to all of your muscles, when thought happens, muscle engages, you will more than likely be able to access the myriad of postures in the yogic practice and be able to live your life more freely, more joyfully, be able to move better, feel better. That doesn't mean that we don't strengthen and we don't create flexibility. We just, in my opinion, we don't put the emphasis on that. We put the emphasis on awareness of all the different muscles, all the different joints, and how to use our body. And then through that awareness, we cultivate strength and flexibility. And as a result of all of that, that's where the yogic postures unfold, the asanas, so to speak, unfold. Now, most people have that the, the opposite direction. I look for a posture and I try to get from that, I try to get that shape. And by trying to get that shape, I might get stronger, I might get more flexible, and maybe I'll get more self-aware. I say do the exact opposite in your asana practice. Go for the awareness, then develop strength and flexibility, then the poses will unfold and many poses unfold. Now at first it feels slow because you're developing awareness of different areas of your body. And this is how I teach all of my immersions, by the way. We pick out a muscle group or an area of the body and we focus on that. Uh, so the majority of the immersions that I've taught online, this throughout 2020 and now throughout 2021, um, we pick a muscle group for that day and we target it not to strengthen, but to become aware of. So how do we become aware of? It's through sensation, okay? And this is more of the pranic layer. Through experiencing the sensation of an activation of a muscle and a release of that muscle. Activation and release. And if we can feel that activation and release, now there's a cycle neurologically that when thought happens, uh, electricity is sent through my body to that muscle to stimulate it, the muscle activates, when, when that muscle activates, a signal is sent back through my nervous system to my brain that says, hey, muscle is activated and this is what it feels like. If you can get that loop happening as well as uh, thought of relaxed muscle, don't engage, and then electricity sent to say, hey, relax, 
and then the muscle releases and then the sensation of relaxation comes over you. If you can get those loops in your nervous system, then at that point, you've gained control of your physical form, awareness of your physical form. You've developed a sense of mastery in that loop within your system. Now you just gotta do that with all the different areas of your body. So this is my focus when I teach the live stream immersions. And that's for the physical body, okay? That's really development of muscle activation, but we're, we're penetrating that whole experience or permeating it with awareness itself, okay? So that is my key goal that I try to share with you. By the way, the next upcoming immersion starts March 2nd, Tuesday, um, and it's going to be focused on uh, yoga, pranayama, and meditation. These are the three practices that I'm also talking about with you today, yoga, aka asana, or sorry, I should say asana, aka yoga, which is what we call yoga these days. It's really actually called asana. Yoga is an umbrella for all the yoga practices, all the self-awareness building practices, which includes asana for the physical body. And it includes uh, meditation for the heart mind. So let's get a little bit deeper into, we know how asana now uh, develops that uh, nervous system response of being able to think and then muscle engages and then sensation is feedback loop. There's a electrical system that happens of awareness. And when that's built, then you can build strength pretty easily, pretty quickly, and flexibility becomes also easier to attain. So awareness first, then strength and flexibility, then postures will arise from that. That's how I learned. Uh, it's it's really, that is the process that I suggest. You can go the other way, it does work. It's just, you'll get faster results in the beginning and then slower you'll get that, you'll get that plateau where you won't real, really be able to advance because you're focusing on the wrong thing. You're trying to attain something outside of yourself instead of attaining something within yourself. And then when you attain something within yourself, self-awareness physically in this conversation, then it's just a form of self-expression to do an asana. Okay, so it's a, it's a, in my opinion, a more sophisticated way of going about it. So the heart mind here, the practices for the heart mind, by the it's called heart mind because it's both emotions and uh, thoughts. Because a lot of us think of thoughts as mind um, and emotions as something separate, but they're both re um, reacting and processing our external life experience and hopefully our internal life experience if we practice them. The heart mind is this magnificent mechanism that we have within us. It's kind of really hard to put a finger on what the mind is or even what a thought is, right? It's our processing system. But if I said, hey, can you show me your thought? You couldn't show me your thought. You could only express it in some way or another. You can use your language to show me a thought, right? But you can't really show me your thought. You can't show me the image of it. And you can't even explain, uh, you can't even show me your feeling. You can explain how you feel, but you can't just show me the feeling. If you could, probably be a lot easier for us to communicate. But uh, thus is the, one of the challenges, the beautiful challenges of life is to try to understand each other through communication and through expression. So um, the heart mind, in order to, I want, I'd like to really just get this um, solid for us to understand. In the physical body, we have all these patterns. You know it because you have something called a posture, right? Where you sit a certain way, you stand, you walk a certain way, and it's, uh, it's basically an imprint of your life's experiences all playing out in the physical form. And you can see it, there's emotional experiences there that are you know, causing maybe your shoulder to roll this way or this way. Uh, so there's, uh, you know, we, we form postures based on our emotional experience, our thoughts. We also form postures based on our physical experiences, whether you played a sport. So I played sports that were all heavy on my right leg. So my right bone density is thicker, my muscles on the right side are stronger. So all of us have life experiences patterned up in the physical body. We have the same thing in the mind, okay? We have all these life experiences in the mind. And some of them are good, just like some of the patterns in our body are good. And some of them are holding us back from experiencing the joy and the bliss of life itself, from being able to freely express ourselves and share with one another and to freely listen to others' experiences without filtering it through our garbage, right? So we all have things, uh, we all have trash in the mind and we also all have great, 
belief systems that serve us and belief systems that don't serve us. We have uh, identities that serve us and we have identities that don't serve us. So the mind is like a garbage bin. Some of it's good and some of it's not, right? We wanna take out the trash that essentially is not serving us and the world. So how do we do that? We do that by um, practicing yoga, not the physical practice of yoga, that's part of it, but the mental practices of yoga, which predominantly, or the big popular one, is meditation. And within meditation, there are multiple things that we can do. In meditation, it, you've, you know, essentially you're cultivating your focus. I wanna say this, when I first started um, my, my teacher training process of studying um, back in 2008, the main thing I, I would say I learned from teacher trainings was my ability to focus my attention on something. Now, of course, I learned asanas and sequencing and all this other stuff. But the main thing I really learned and the most important thing was how to hold my attention, to focus and harness my attention. That, beyond all other things, transformed my life and also transformed the way that I share this practice. Because if I couldn't hold my attention on a subject or on say the sequence I'm building or the sensation I'm trying to cultivate within your practice and whatever, then I would not be able to create a transformative space for you as the yoga practitioner to experience your uh, d deeper levels of awareness of your physical body, your mind, your breath, or the energy that pulses through you and ultimately help you get towards that experience of awareness of the deepest core of your being, which is again, Chit Ananda, this place of perfect balance of bliss and consciousness or awareness. So what you learn through cultivating attention is what the power of your mind is. The power of your mind is to harness attention. Now, once you learn how to harness your attention, you can place attention like a weapon or like a tool on whatever it is you want to do. The buddhi, the intellect, is one of the parts of the mind. And like a tool, you have the ability, if you've strengthened your attention, to turn that uh, magnificent tool of, um, of the buddhi, the intellect, inward to, in order to ask yourself the right questions to take out the trash that doesn't matter. It requires courage and vulnerability undoubtedly because ultimately to ask yourself the right questions and to inquire, to contemplate, requires that you are willing to see the truth about what is piled up in the mind. It requires that you're willing to say, hey, there's a mess here before you can clean it up. Most people never get to that point in their life to, to admittedly say, I've got a mess in my mind. We want to tell everybody else around us that we've got it all together, right? I saw somebody in here was a psychiatrist or a psychologist in the Facebook section. So, uh, you know, I know when I was younger growing up, it was, uh, for, for many people, it was a shame to say that you were going to see a therapist or a psychologist because you didn't want people to know that you had a mess up in here. Yet everyone has a mess up in here. And so why would we be ashamed of being the only one that's honest about it? So what required first to work on the heart mind, meditation, the practice of meditation requires an honesty with yourself, a courage, a vulnerability to say that I've got a mess going on. And by the way, that mess will never be fully cleaned. It's just like brushing your teeth, by the way. Have you ever brushed your teeth once and then suddenly the plaque never comes back? No. <laughs> just like meditation the mind is constantly building up plaque it's constantly building up stuff that needs to be removed okay so there has to be a maintenance factor just like the physical body you can't just lift up a weight once and expect to be strong although some people do these days right it doesn't happen that way there is a process of repetition that is required for the duration of your lifetime. Now, I don't wanna turn anybody off because meditation is a joyful experience at some point when guided right 
and also when the trash is starting to really be removed. The, the hardest part is stepping into it, which is why I'm focusing on the March immersion, this upcoming immersion, is focused entirely on yoga, pranayama, and meditation. Pranayama is met breath work. Meditation because I feel that in service to all of you, if, we, if you have gui a guide, somebody to support you, and you have accountability, a way of showing up each day where you know you're gonna be doing meditation, but you're also getting some fun, enjoyable asana out of it, you're just, and, and of course, breath work where you're developing, rejuvenating your energy. It, meditation can be a real joy. It can be a real pleasure, okay? It can be a, a fun thing to do. Not to say that it doesn't take courage and it doesn't take vulnerability, but once you start to embrace your own honest integrity, then meditation can be fun. It becomes fun, and I'm, I'm gonna you know, say this eventually, to see the workings of your mind, including the little self inside of us, like the child that is screaming for attention, the child that didn't get what they wanted, the child that got made fun of. When we see that part of ourselves, at first, it's hard, it's difficult, it's, gut-wrenching and then it becomes fun to seek out all those different things because you recognize that working through them helps you access your potential today working through the little little mat that was like you know made fun of for not being able to read well or spell well still made fun of for that um if I, if I let that hold me back, then I would never have created these online courses that I have that have tons of writing with lots of misspelling, right? But if I let this hold me back, then I would never put out in the world the gift that I have of sharing this practice of yoga. And we all do this. So we have to go in and take out the trash of the mind. The next layer deep, by the way, is prana. And this is why I love the tantric model for this because the tantric model of, of the layered self has prana deeper than the heart mind. And why that's important is because what that says is prana is energy. It's your autonomic nervous system. It's your um, sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, which just means sympathetic is the awake, uh, aroused, hello, I'm here, present, uh, focused, clear, uh, whereas the uh, the parasympathetic is the rest and digest, the calm. These are the two sides of the nervous system. And prana is essentially talking about that. Prana is a Sanskrit word for that, okay? And they use something called ida and pingala, which directly relate to the two sides of our nervous system. And they talk about balancing these two in order to find this equanimous state, the state of uh, most ease, I would say. And in neuroscience, they talk about the same thing, understanding that you can find a balance between the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. That said, no one's saying, well, maybe the, some old school yoga traditions are saying you wanna be on one side or the other, and that's the good side and that's the bad side. No, we need all sides of our energy systems, okay? So balancing prana doesn't mean that you're sitting in a balanced state of mind all the time. It's more like being aware again Awareness is the key. Aware of when your spikes of energy are and, when, and how to utilize that spike of energy and when your low energy is and how to utilize that. For example, if you're feeling lethargic, you have two options. Maybe you need to be there. So take a nap, rest, relax, do restorative yoga. Or perhaps you've been there for a while and you know that you actually need to motivate yourself and switch sides. So you do something that balances out that. So that might be you decide to do pranayama, which may help rejuvenate you. It might be that you do a rigorous yoga practice that might help you do it. Maybe you get outside and go for a walk or look at the sun for a little while doing the sunset or the sunrise, whatever it is. So if we are aware of, again, the deepest core of our being, awareness, it just keeps coming back to that chit. So if we're aware of our pranic layer, our energy layer, which most people are not, um, they're not, they, they rope it into this mess of emotions, right? And don't realize that they might be, um, let's say, moody, which would be like an emotion, right? I might be moody, like switching between happy and angry and sad and um, frustrated, right? I might have all these different motions, positive and or negative, flying around. And you might be thinking it's your mind layer, which it might be, 
or it might be that you're really tired and you're trying to agitate that tiredness by drinking coffee or staying awake or whatever, right? So the pranic layer, remember each layer deep permeates the outermost. So if I am tired, then my mind is going to um, take on a different set of thoughts than if I'm energized, right? My emotions are gonna take on a different shape and experience than if I am uh, sleepy, yeah? So, and the physical body was also affected. If I am feeling energized, I'm probably more likely to, you know, be able to do hard, challenging things for my muscular system, whereas if I'm not, I'm more likely to enjoy resting and digesting and sleeping or just napping or zoning out. Okay, so we have this pranic layer and to become, just to initiate our awareness of that layer, we do pranayama. So we've got three practices now. For the body, asana. For the heart-mind, we have um, meditation amongst many others. And then for the pranic layer, we have pranayama. Pranayama is what's becoming popular these days, breath work. You've seen it like in, uh, people are, are talking to me all about like, um, oh, you gotta try this breath work stuff, which is comical to me because breath work is nothing new. It's been around forever, um, so, you know, but now it's becoming popular, like asana is becoming popular, or asana is popular, but there was that like craze of expanding into the asana. So breath work's been around forever and I, I encourage you all to do it. Um, of course, make sure you're doing uh, pranayamas or breath works that are serving you. There are some that will amplify what already is. Remember this one thing. We as human beings are deeply attracted to like, meaning like towards like. Yes, hopefully we are attracted to balancing that out as well, but a lot of times, uh, if you are like a hot spicy person, you'll be attracted to hot spicy food, right? The same thing is with, if you are, um, an energized uppity person, you'll probably be attracted to epi like uppity energy kind of things where you might be better served, and I'm not saying you should be, but you might be better served to do relaxing things to balance out your energy. Okay, so that what that means is do pranayamas that balance out your energy in order to come into that state of equanimity if you want to practice meditation and asana. Now, asana and meditation can help you figure out where your energies are, but ultimately pranayama is the one that we want to get down to in order to develop the awareness of our energy systems. This is so key because you will start to learn how to better manage your day-to-day -day life if you know if you are aware of the swing of energy and you know that all right i'm here i am i'm at a, a energetic high that means i know that i'm going to go down soon if you're aware that you can arrange your day accordingly that's i mean so key but you have to become aware of your energy so we do pranayama so for the month of March, we have this immersion. It's called Move, Breathe, Release. And it's all about yoga asana, pranayama, and meditation. It's exactly that, what I call the trifecta of yoga in order to develop awareness of these three layers. Ultimately, that's how you know I would love to do yoga all the time that way. So I've decided that for this month, all 12 yoga classes are gonna be focused on those three practices. So each class, you get three classes per week. By the way, you get them for a lifetime. So even if you can't practice live, you get to practice them anytime that serves you in the future and so on. So the immersion is now discounted. Right now it's the early bird. If you buy before it goes live, you get a discounted rate. So if you want that immersion, make sure you head over to the yogimat.com. I'll put it in the comments and you'll see it from um, my other account. Or you click the link in my Instagram profile. Um, theyogimat.com. You can sign up for the Move, Breathe, Release immersion starting March 2nd. We're gonna be practicing for these three outermost layers, body, mind, heart, mind, and pranic layer, the layer of our energy. So we have three practices predominantly so far. Pranayama, we have meditation, and we have asana. Now, there are two deeper layers from practicing these three what you cultivate 
is the deepest layer awareness. That is the most important thing. By using these practices, not only are you developing a cleanliness of the outer layers of your being, but you're strengthening the core of your being, awareness. Now awareness starts to get stronger and it starts to permeate more, uh, let's say this, you become more alert or awake to the fact that you are a being of consciousness, awareness, okay? There is a layer called the void shunya. This is the, or the transcendent void, which is the second layer deep. This is what you experience when you are in deep states of meditation that uh, sometimes it's called samadhi or oneness. Um, sometimes uh, you'll see that in like transcendentalism. They're trying to go to this nothingness, this emptiness as it's called in Buddhism. So it's a state of being where um, you are in deep states of stillness where all the noise of the mind may be still there, but it's no longer captivating your attention. Your attention is resting on the, the void, the vacuum, the nothingness that is the exact um, opposite of the fullness. So the fullness that um, is experienced at the deepest core of our layer, of our being, is something called uh, Chit Ananda. It's a perfect harmony between dualities, which chit ananda is awareness is chit, ananda is bliss. So those two things, it's also awareness um, and chit are also known as um, emptiness or stillness. And ananda is also known as full, fullness or manifest, right? It's the, it's the potent, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's potentiality coming into form. So these two things at the core are in perfect balance. In this shunya, void is just the stillness layer. And it's really, um, it's a very addicting layer to get to in meditation. So when you go through these layers, body, asana, mind, meditation, prana, pranayama, uh, breath work, you eventually get to this place of the void, the nothingness. And this becomes something that really brings people back time and time again to the meditation practice. It becomes addicting because it becomes so um, easeful to be there. But we can't just stop there because at that point we're missing the, the very core of our being which is that uh, experience of oneness, of consciousness flowing through us. There is a momentum to being at the core of our being. And by being here in this shunya void, we will tend to, I, I would say, avoid, if we get addicted to this state, avoid the challenges of life, avoid the, the outer world and just say that like, oh, it's just better to be inside. Now that's not the teaching that I'm trying to share with you today. I'm not trying to say that we should just go inside and stay there like, um, and then sit on top of a mountain and expect somebody else to take care of our livelihood. But we can take this experience of going inward and bring it back outward um, if we can go inward to that, that place of awareness, we can come back outward and experience life in a different way. Meaning we can take on the challenges of everyday life, but with more grace, more, um, you know, I, actually the word is grace. We can, do, we can take on the, the challenges, the hardships, the struggles with a more graceful attitude, a more joyful attitude, because ultimately we know that life is a gift, that it is a privilege to be in this human form. And so we can take care of the physical body now with a, a level of consciousness that is not just trying to attain, attain poses and so on and so forth, um, but rather to take care of this physical form because it is a gift that has been provided for us, a vehicle for us to experience this life through. Okay, so um, those are the five layers. I put up top here the six layered self. So the outermost layer, which I did not talk about, is called our stuff. Our stuff is like our things, our home, our car. There, you know, there's an energy about those things that we believe, um, you know, our, our heart mind, our ego part of our heart mind will believe that um, this, you know, it's like a pile of things that we believe will either make us more happy, more free, more lovable, whatever. So there, there's an energy about those things that we, we place on those things. And so that's why the sixth layer itself includes them because it's part of our practice to recognize that we have 
possessed or made these things into a, um, a part of who we are rather than something that is outside of ourselves that we can experience and utilize. Okay, so this layer ultimately stuff becomes quite obsessive if you're not going inward on a regular basis. We, we, we put all of our attention, all of that magnificent uh, strength of the, what's called the buddhi, again, the intellect, and we focus it outward, and we, we put all of this gift that we have of attention on something that isn't us, that isn't going to develop our, uh, our well-being or the well-being of anyone else around us. And so by going inward through these three practices I'm mentioning today, asana, meditation, pranayama, we get closer and closer to the experience of the core of our being and we stop obsessing about things that really don't matter. We start to see how the outer world is more just a privilege. It's something fun to enjoy, but it's not, it doesn't define us. Okay, so you can still have your things. That's not the, the point of this conversation. You can still have your home. You can still have your car. It could be fancy, but it's, it's not... Um, it's not taking over your identity and the pursuit of those things is not um, affecting your overall sense of joy. Meaning it, you're not, you recognize that there's really no long-term happiness in having a nicer car. You know, there's, there, there are things of course that, you know, having a roof over your head versus not might enable you to do these practices and things like that. So there are there is value to things and we wanna make sure that we recognize that. We just don't wanna get caught up in believing that those things um, really alter the core of our being. It doesn't change anything. If you have something, it doesn't change that at the core of you is self-awareness, is that deepest sense of consciousness flowing through us. So that, in essence, is the sixth layer itself and throughout the month of March, we're gonna be practicing with this sixth layered self. Every practice is gonna include yoga, pranayama, and meditation, making sure that we're working on these outermost layers in order to experience the innermost, the core of us. That shunya, that void, that stillness is one of our goals. But to go even beyond that, that chit, that ever flowing current that is pulsing through all things that is unexplainable and intangible we just know that it exists because we exist right that thing that experiencing that is totally possible and it can be done within these deep states of meditation so we work with these practices in order to go there in order to come back into the world and experience the world more joyfully more gracefully not stopping to not do the dishes and say, well, you know, I'm a conscious being and whatever, but actually taking on that role and recognizing that's just a, one of the things that we get to do rather than have to do. Okay, I, I certainly could use that teaching myself. So now I'm gonna check in the Q&A box. If you have questions for me, please uh, share. I'd be delighted to um, answer any of your questions now. And um, also in Facebook, I am monitoring that um, so if you want to throw it up in Facebook, we've got some people from Ontario. Welcome, welcome. Um, cool, cool. Nice to meet you all over here. Thanks for signing up for the Immersion, Annette. And anyone want to put up questions in the question box, please feel free to do so. I'm going to take a few moments to answer any questions that come up. Um, if you've got them, we can clarify. And let's just check back over here. No Q&A going on here. So I won't stay on too long. So if you've got questions, throw them up now. If you appreciated this conversation, throw up some hearts um, and be happy to uh, continue these kind of conversations further. And thank you, hello to everybody. Um, Ananda, Limitless Bliss, beautiful. Yes, well said. Yeah, cool. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for joining the Immersion in Spirals Yoga. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm happy to share with you coming up in March. That's exciting. Anybody else going to be uh, signing up for the Immersion? Um, cool, cool. Thank you. Yes, awesome. You are too. Wonderful. Yes, I'm happy to share the, the information. Much appreciated. Um, you joined late. Please explain again. So I'm going to repost this entire live feed. So those of you that missed it, it's gonna go up on my IGTV. 
Uh, I will just edit it down and then repost it. Um, what's the cost to join the immersion? So the March immersion, you get 12 live stream classes. By the way, somebody asked um, what time are those classes? They happen at 12 Eastern Standard Time. Right now, it's 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So one hour from now on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. But here's the cool thing, no matter where you are in the world, obviously if you're watching this right now, it's probably a good time for you to practice yoga, but no matter where you are in the world, it doesn't matter because you get those classes, all 12 of them, for life. I think it equals out to be something like $8 per class. It's $98 for the month-long immersion, and again, lifetime access to all of those. Now, normally, it's $148 for the immersion. If you purchase it this weekend, um, then it is $98. So make sure you go grab it now. The link is in my Instagram profile, and it's also the Yogi Mat dot com t-h-e-y-o-g-i-m-a-t-t -T dot com the yogi mat dot com um, i can put it in the comments i think over here yes the yogi mat dot com and i'll even put it slash shop okay that will get you there how much asana practice will be a part of each class do you need much space around. Um, so we'll be doing about 45 minutes asana practice, okay? Um, and then the it's 75 minute classes, so the remaining time will be um, with pranayama and meditation. There are also, you know, give or take, so it might be 40 minute asana or whatever. I also give a little dharma talk, a little discussion in the beginning of something that will inspire us to um, really get into our asana practice and um, try to become more self-aware of our body. We'll be working with the layered self, of, of course. Um, so let me see if I can, I don't know if I can pin that comment, but the yogimat.com slash shop is where you can get it. Um, and, oh, I put it up like 10 times. That's weird, <laughs> unintentionally. Okay, went out to YouTube, went out to Twitter, very nice. All right, how can you start with me? Go to theyogimat.com slash shop. That's where you can join. Um, you joined, yeah. So don't worry, I will repost this um, experience for everybody and it'll be free. It'll be up here on uh, Facebook. I'll post it immediately on Instagram. I'm gonna post it later. I'm just gonna give a quick edit to it so that um, I can post it to IGTV and I think that's it, everyone. If you've got any more questions over here on Facebook, feel free to ask. Um, if you've got anything to share on Instagram or YouTube, feel free to throw it up in the chat. I also do see the YouTube chat now, so if you've got something you wanna say, you can. Um, otherwise, I wanna share a big thank you to everybody for tuning in. Um, and thank you for your time. By the way, this is, um, what we're doing here is called satsang. Satsang is a sacred gathering to discuss the teachings of yoga. And this is what we have done together and shared together in this experience. So I wanna thank you for gathering for this satsang. And if you have any questions or you have anything that you wanna um, discuss in future satsangs, then please send me a direct message or put it in the comments when I post this video. I'd be happy to uh, discuss further. So that will help me to kind of um, plan the next phase of what I'm gonna share with you all, all right? Thank you again for tuning in. I'm so happy to have had this opportunity to share with you. Again, the March Immersion is focused entirely on this subject of body, breath, mind, or move, breathe, release is the title. We're gonna be doing yoga, meditation, um, pranayama throughout each class. There's gonna be 12 classes available for lifetime access. We do practice live, so if you do wanna practice live, uh, you can, those classes take place at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. That's the same time zone as New York City, by the way. If you wanna take a quick look, you can look do a time zone converter for New York City to your time. It's GMT minus five. Usually that means in Europe, the classes, uh, like if you're in Germany, let's say, the classes take place at 6 p.m. Um, I know the time change is coming up, so it will be different for everybody, uh, I think mid-month. But um, also if you're in uh, the UK, that's gonna be 5 p.m. 
All right, everyone, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate your time and your attention. Um, lots of love to you. And of course, thank you for following the Yogi Mat. And I look forward to sharing.